very warm welcome from physics for students and those who are watching this video on tensors and linear transformations well uh, the basic idea of making this video came a few days back when I was uh, discussing with one of my former student and a researcher on mathematics and physics over a cup of coffee in the cafeteria and we found that there is a very distinctive and a subtle difference between tensors and linear transformations, well, difference leads to equality, so there is also a relationship between these two. However, pondering over this topic, what we found is that the lot of students or the fresh graduates sometimes find there is a confusion or a dilemma or how these two topics are related. Because tensors, once they're written and they can be written in a form of a matrix, matrix can also be written in a form of a tensor. So what actually these are and how these are internally related to each other actually brought me to make this video. This is a very short, quick video to make you aware about the relationship and the idea between these two topics. Considering the fact that if you want to really visualize a tensor, uh, it is a little bit abstract, obviously. And uh, th when things are more abstract, they become difficult to visualize. And this leads to a little bit of problems and confusions and uh, uh, further, further complications. I have found in my career that same things goes with topology also because topology, the surfaces and everything is difficult to visualize. So uh, obviously visualizing a tensor, uh, it is uh, a little bit difficult because it deals with abstract concepts. Tensors are a little bit more abstract because if you really want to have a geometric interpretation. On the right hand side what I have done is that I have given a matrix just two by two which is relatively easy to conceptualize and understand. Now a single vector, for example an arrow which you can see on the right on the left hand side of your screen, x, y, z can be imagined, you know, something which has got a magnitude and a direction, but tensors they don't have this kind of an interpretation. Matrices become more familiar because they are essential tool in many calculations from solving problems in linear equations up to quantum mechanics up to engineering so it becomes fairly easy and it becomes uh, quite a kind of a practice to do with matrix so here on the left hand side what I have shown is that yes uh, tensors are a little bit abstract to visualize tensors comes used to mechanics fluid mechanics hydrodynamics and also in engineering uh, tensors also lead to calculation of Hilbert spaces when we deal with abstract geometry and the most important general theory of relativity deals with tensor right from its inception. As I have been uh, expressing this thought in all of my previous videos that general relativity because it deals with arbitrary positions in space and time and it is invariant with the coordinate transformation we need to have a tool which doesn't change with the change of coordinates and that is exactly the job the tensor does. On the right hand side of your screen you can see that I have written that yes uh, matrix are easy to visualize and they are got many practical tools and implications. So these, uh, this is a just a kind of a very very basic idea on this tensor on the left hand side which can be written as a 3 by 3 matrix. It is not uh, rigorous and you can write this 3 by 3 matrix back to a tensor. Just to give you a basic idea this one a b c d this 2 by 2 matrix can be written and expanded into this form so just to give you an idea that what is tensor and matrices look and they can be expanded and they can be written in either part of their own way now if i consider for example two vectors u and v in m dimensional euclidean space obviously then we can uh, and alpha obviously the angle between them then we can uh, form the inner product uh, something like this and the scalar product product like this note that you, i have used u sub i and v sub i because i am in using the einstein summation convention right so the geometric meaning of the scalar pro product is this one which i have taken the magnitude along with the uh, you know the angle between them where alpha is the angle between the two vectors now we can check that the scalar product is actually linear in both so th this actually shows that uh, we can check out that the uh, scalar product is linear in both the cases so 
for example if we further take in a kind of a, a you know a two two vectors which are u and w okay and uh, say for example lambda uh, being uh, we are taking it and if we are producing this real number right the scalar product is a mapping which now let us see further okay i have drawn on the left hand side this black and white this is just an imagination of vector space space which is l and what it does it produces this which has got this property so what i'm trying to tell you is this is actually called the linearity on the second argument right and this mapping is also linear note that i have marked the g on the top and the bottom as red because this is the mapping of G and please note that this is not the usual metric tensor D no it is not the metric tensor D G so what we have done is that this is a vector so we have we can regard the scalar product as a mapping which takes two vectors to give a, uh, a real number which has a property which I have shown with blue arrow and this is called linearity in the second argument of mapping G so this is just kind of a very basic example to show the linearity uh, how it leads to mapping so for example a scalar product I have just shown by a simple example that a scalar product is a mapping which takes two vectors V and U and it produces a number N here it is linear in both arguments right and as a scalar product we mean that it means that it holds the distributive property now on the left hand side although it is not uh, true this is just let us visualize this to be a r dimensional tensor right and if we take our rank r tensor which takes r vectors it will also give you a kind of a single number which is denoted by n so this is just a kind of another example which shows that taking two vectors it produces a real number r dimensional tensor also taking r and it is producing a real number n so on the bottom you can see this can be written also as this so till now what we have seen is that tensor is mapping as mapping which takes some number of vectors u v whatever and it produces an output number which i have shown as n scalar product is an example of a rank 2 tensor because we kept it simple as two vector arguments this particular tensor representing the scalar product is the metric tensor which we deal in general relativity now for example if we take rank 2 tensor to keep things simple which takes two vectors e1 and e2 so a linear combination of the vector this one will lead to this one again i have used v sub i and e sub i as a linear combination now for example we take a general tensor right uh, i just named instead of tau t to keep things simple which is a rank 2 tensor right then combining all possible pairs of basis vectors mind it that i am combining all possible pairs of basic vectors which gives to this one now so tensors uh, um, take two vectors right and it gives numbers so for basis vectors say for example ei and ej we get this which is on the bottom uh, side of your screen which is tij i have put a double dot so that it extends and goes up to this so here we see that the tensor can be represented as a matrix right and we can make the tensor act on all pairs of basis vectors and we get a matrix of numbers these numbers which we have we have right now are called the components of the tensors obviously with respect to the given basis so it becomes very important what is the type of basis that we are selecting and based on that so this is actually how a tensors can be represented by a matrix and we can take the tensors act on each pair of the basis vectors and we get a matrix of numbers so what we can say that tensors can be represented as matrix we can also say that numbers are called the components of the tensor tensors generally change their components when you change the basis and this is important representation of a matrix depends on the choice of the basis so we have selected e sub i if we select any other kind of a, a basis then we get a different matrix 
and this is important dot product or inner product remains invariant that it doesn't change under transformations here by transformation i mean transformation of coordinates now there is something special about tensors let us see what is that so for example we take a four momentum vector given by this and when we uh, you know when when we uh, what i would say when we we extrapolate this to the minkowski space of inner product the momentum vector is this now here what happens is that the m is invariant the m that is the rest mass is invariant under transformation something which doesn't transfer is the spatial momentum i have given it is red p sub s uh, raised to the power 2 so now say for example at the bottom of the screen what you'd see is that from particles of rest mass that is i have equated to zero if we take the velocity and it somehow leads to m squared v squared we can say that spatial momentum is not invariant and doesn't transform as a tensor right so this is just a kind of a thing which will show that the uh, on the on the screen you can see dot product or inner product remains invariant m is invariant under transformation what does change is a spatial momentum which is not invariant and it change as the tensor gets transformed so this is a kind of a sum up which you can see that how things lead to so just to summarize in all what we can tell is a tensor is an object that takes an input tensor for example in case of a geometric vectors and produces an output tensor that is invariant under a change of basis note i have said that it is invariant under a change of basis because if you are changing the basis things will change right a tensor can have a contravariant and a covariant components i'm not going deep into this because we have videos you can watch it out on covariant and contravariant tensors in my playlist of tensors to the components of the tensor transforming against or with the change of basis the rank or degree or order of a tensor is the number of axes or components don't confused with the dimension of its each axis it is the number of axes or components it has and for example n m uh, tensor has n contravariant components and m covariant components with the rank n and m this is just a note so don't worry i have explained it further in my videos on co and co contravariant uh, tensors so this is all in all a nice quick video just to give you an idea on the linear transformations and tensors how they are related to each other uh, how uh, tensors can be written as matrices and what is important is the basis and we should not forget that i hope you liked my video so here is uh, my link to the channel physics for students do subscribe like and please press on the bell icon to get all the kinds of notification i hope you like this video so stay safe stay happy and i wish you all the best and hope you're staying fine in this pandemic period bye bye and have a nice day